Our goal here with example 9, prove that the antiderivative of du over ax squared plus u squared is equal to 1 over a arctangent of u over a plus c. The reason why we want to do that is because of example 8 that we just did. So remember, after we completed the square, here's what this thing looked like. And we had to go through this whole process of dividing by 16 so that we can make it look like this. Well, what if, like look at the way that this one is, antiderivative dx is 16 plus x plus 1 quantity squared. What if we just had an antiderivative rule that applied to this one and we wouldn't have to do all of this business? But of course, if you don't remember the antiderivative rule that we're about to prove, you could always just do what we did here, right? It's super easy. Okay, so in order to get started, we're going to do the exact kind of thing that I did on the previous one, but we're doing it in general in terms of u's and in terms of a's. I'm going to rewrite my integral down. du a squared plus u squared. So obviously, this whoops, uh, it, yeah, it's this one. It has to be a 1. It is not a 1, so we have to fix it. We're going to fix it by just dividing everything by an a squared so that it forces a 1 in that spot. So divide by a squared. Divide this one by a squared. Divide this one by a squared. And just like I did before, this du over a squared, I'm going to pull that out front of the integral as a 1 over a squared. integral of a du over a squared divided by a squared is 1 plus and then u squared over a squared I will rewrite as a u over a quantity squared and then I'll have to do u substitution which can be totally confusing because we already have a u in here so how about we choose something else like I don't know maybe a k we'll do a k substitution so k is equal to u over a dk is equal to just 1 over a du, which we don't have. We kind of did, but we pulled out 1 over a squared. That's okay. We can fix this by putting in a 1 over a and then compensating with an a over 1, so times a out here. Right? And then when we go to simplify this, the a over a squared on the outside just makes it a 1 over a integral of... 1 over a du becomes dk over 1 plus, and then our u over a just becomes our k, which we're going to square. And now it's a straightforward application of the antiderivative rule for arctangent. This is equal to 1 over a times the arctangent of k plus c, take out your k and replace it with u over a. So our final answer, 1 over a times the arctangent of u over a, and then plus c. So basically what's happening here is whatever this number is, you take the square root of it, of course, then that's going to be, you take the reciprocal, that's going to be your coefficient right out here, times arctangent of... And then it's the quotient of these two, whatever your function is in here, divided by your a value that we got by taking the square root. All right, so let me come back over here and summarize these as some new anti-differentiation rules for some, in, uh, some inverse trigonometric functions. So we let u be a differentiable function of x where a is greater than zero. So the first one is, uh, that looks like the arc sine. So you can do the exact same kind of thing that we just did here. Antiderivative of du over the square root of a squared minus u squared. Remember that inside of the square root, traditionally that a squared should be a 1. It's not a 1. You can fix it. You can do the same kind of thing that we did before. And notice that its antiderivative turns out to be just arc sine of u over a plus c. Here's the one that we just proved for the arc tangent. And then we have one more for arc secant. This one's probably not going to come up too much. Who knows? It might be one of the exercises that are in your book, but 
there's no chance that this one's going to be on the actual AP exam, but just for the sake of thoroughness, the antiderivative of du over u times the square root of u squared minus a squared is equal to 1 over arc secant of the absolute value of u over a plus c. So you know what? Why don't we go ahead and put this into practice on the next example. Actually, you know what? This video is probably long enough. We'll cap it off here and we'll try it in the next video.